Have you ever turned the course knob on the G1000 and noticed that nothing happens? The answer to that is mode. Back in 1988, I bought my first television universal remote because of the stack of remotes that we were accumulating. Now I have a drawer full of later generations, and I don't know why I don't throw these things out. My wife has always had this little jab thing going. She accuses me of making our remotes too complicated. She'll say, I press these channel change buttons and they don't do anything. And I'll come back, that's because you just watched a DVD and the remote is still set in DVD mode. Well, it's the same thing with the G1000. Turns out that the G1000 has four different navigation modes and the course knob only works with two of them. Okay, to be more exact, the G1000 actually has two modes, and one of those modes has three sub-modes. The reason for this is a bit of legacy. When the GPS first arrived, it was of course retrofitted to existing aircraft that were not manufactured with GPS on board. An example of such an aircraft is the X-Plane steam gauge version of the 172. Since the GPS units, the Garmin 530 and 430 in this case, were not part of the original design of this aircraft, an extra switch was added to allow switching between GPS and NAV, that is, ground-based stations. You might be wondering why this switch was necessary since the 530 and 430 already have CDI buttons that perform this function already. Well, it's more legacy. The very first GPS units to show up in aircraft like the Bendix King 80 series didn't have CDI buttons, so this was something that was developed later. Because there was concern that pilots had gotten used to having this switch, when the CDI button was developed, manufacturers decided to just keep the GPS nav switch in place. And so it goes in this field of aviation. That's why there are so many different ways of doing the same things. The purpose of this video is to explore the four navigation modes of the Garmin G1000. The two primary modes, GPS and NAV, are selected using the CDI soft key. Garmin makes it easy to distinguish between these two modes simply by looking at the needles in the HSI. Magenta needles is GPS mode, meaning guidance is controlled by the GPS. Green needles means the system is getting guidance from a ground-based station like VOR or ILS, whose signal is received by one of two NAV radios built into the G1000 by selecting either VOR1 or VOR2. Let's take a look at how NAV mode works in flight. As you can see, we're flying off the heading bug due west. The Liberty VOR LIB is just a little bit to the northwest of us. Let's set up and fly a 330 degree radial off that VOR. The first thing we need to do is place the G1000 in nav mode and then choose VOR1 for the nav1 radio. First, I'll look up the frequency of Liberty from the nearest page of the MFD and we find that to be 113.0. Next, we'll enter the frequency in our NAV1 radio. You see it identifies as LIB. Since we're not running off the GPS right now, we won't get any distance information. But this aircraft just so happens to be equipped with DME, so let's set that up. Over on the PFD, we'll click the DME soft key and then select the frequency we're using for our VOR and that's NAV1 and then to display it we'll click the PFD soft key and choose DME and we can see that it's telling us we're tuned to NAV1 at 113.0 and we're almost five miles out from the station now all that's left to do is to dial in our radio of 330 degrees using the course knob now, flying a VOR radio with the autopilot is incredibly easy, and as you can see, we're currently in heading mode, heading west, 
and all we need to do is click the nav button and as you can see VOR shows up in white and when it gets close enough to intercept the radio it will turn green and enter the radio on a nice 30 degree intercept. The G1000 not only gives us the familiar course deviation indicator showing us the intercept is off to the left but we can watch the whole affair on the moving map. Flying VOR radials has never been easier. So now let's take a look at those three GPS modes and we'll start with what we'll call leg mode that is the auto sequencing mode and this is a sneaky one. Leg mode is actually the default and if no other mode is selected this is the mode we'll be in. The easiest way to tell if we're in leg mode is by looking up in the enunciator panel of the PFD and if you see a magenta arrow then you're in leg mode. Leg mode is only useful if there's a flight plan entered in the GPS. A leg is defined as the path connecting two waypoints. So you can see here in my flight plan I have KRDU to LIB, that's the Liberty VOR, and that constitutes the first leg. And the concept of active leg is always the second waypoint of a leg and is indicated with this magenta arrow. To activate a leg, bring up the flight plan, turn on the cursor, then move then move to the second waypoint of a leg then press the act leg soft key and you'll notice there's now a magenta arrow pointing to the newly selected waypoint and the enunciator now shows this new active leg upon activating a leg the GPS will fly directly to that leg intercept it then auto sequences way through all the waypoints in your flight plan and if you use autopilot and nav mode this will all happen automatically and you can just sit back and watch. I have a suspicion there's a lot of users that never use anything else but this mode and don't even realize that this is leg mode. Leg mode is by far the most useful of all of the navigation modes. Next is direct to mode. This one is very simple. Using this mode creates a very simple flight plan consisting of just a single waypoint. This mode has limited usefulness because it deletes any existing flight plan. But for emergencies, for example, it's perfect because it sends you directly to where you want to go. There are two ways to use direct to mode. If you have a flight plan loaded in the GPS and you decide to jump to another waypoint in the flight plan, you can do that with the direct to key. Notice what happens though when I do that. It deletes all the waypoints up to the one I set as my direct to. And that's going to really mess me up when I get to Greensboro and want to invert my flight and fly the flight plan back to Raleigh. A much better method would be to select the waypoint and use the act leg soft key to activate the waypoint while we're remaining in leg mode as leg mode won't disturb any of the waypoints in the flight plan. A far more useful way to use direct to mode is when you're in an emergency and you need to find a place to land. If the emergency is not immediate and you've got some time to select a waypoint that you might know about, you can start by pressing the direct to key which brings up the direct to box. Here you would enter the name of a waypoint using the FMS knobs and press enter. If the emergency is urgent, use the nearest soft key followed by the direct to key and enter. Three keys gets the job done. Anytime you're in direct mode, the enunciator of the PFD will indicate that with the familiar direct to symbol. If you ever need to cancel direct to mode, just delete the flight plan. As with leg mode, the course knob is disabled for obvious reasons. So this brings us to the final GPS mode. The OBS mode converts the active waypoint into a VOR-like nav aid. This mode is very handy for getting back on course after dodging weather or for executing a holding pattern. This mode will only work if a flight plan exists in the GPS and you're currently in leg mode. OBS mode works with any kind of waypoint including VORs, 
intersections, airports, user-defined waypoints, anything. It's a far superior way to navigate VORs because it uses GPS, as there's no frequencies to bother with and the waypoint's not limited to 40 miles. And, unlike Direct 2 mode, OBS mode will not delete your flight plan. Let's see how this works. So here we are on the KRDU to Liberty VOR leg and we find ourselves far north of that course. And we're far enough off course that it doesn't make any sense to try to backtrack at this point. So what we want to do is treat this times intersection as if it was a VOR and shoot a radio from there straight into KGSO and then intercept that radio from our current position and then head straight on in. OBS mode is the perfect tool for this job. And before we do anything, we want to make sure we're in heading mode so that things don't change or move around on us while we're configuring. So the first thing we need to do is activate this leg from the Liberty VOR to the Kimes intersection. And we do that by bringing up the flight plan, selecting Kimes, and then activate leg. And now we're ready to activate OBS mode, and we do that by pressing the OBS soft key. And notice that it highlights in white, showing that OBS mode is active. Now you notice a long line through the Kimes intersection. Half this line is magenta, the other half is white. So using the course knob, we rotate it around until the white part of the line lines right up with GSO, and that will be our radial straight into Greensboro. We can use the autopilot nav mode to fly the radio now, instead of trying to do it by hand. As you can see, the angle the GPS is choosing here is almost exactly 30 degrees on the intercept. The CDI bar on the HSI is starting to move now, so we're almost merged onto the radio. Once we get to Kimes, we can either continue to ride the radio all the way into Greensboro or click the OBS key and revert back to leg mode to fly that final leg. OBS mode is very simple to use and the more you use it, the more you want to use it. So just to summarize what we've talked about here today, the G1000 supports the two familiar modes, GPS and NAV, using their magenta and green color conventions. Since TAA aircraft no longer provide a GPS NAV switch, that duty is now accomplished using the CDI soft key. The G1000 now consists of three modes, LEG, Direct2, and OBS. Quite an improvement over the old 430 and 530. Nav mode, recognizable by its green needles, tries hard to maintain look and feel with its older predecessors. I don't quite understand why they chose to use the terms VOR1 and VOR2 rather than Nav1 and Nav2, but in any case, these are the two selections for tuning the two Nav radios. Guidance is displayed on the HSI in the traditional fashion. And naturally, the course knob sets the radial. You'll easily know when you're in one of the GPS modes by the magenta needles. The default mode is leg mode or auto sequencing mode. This mode only makes sense if you have a flight plan installed in the GPS. Leg mode will auto sequence through all the waypoints in the flight plan. It begins at the active waypoint and continues all the way until there is no more waypoints in the flight plan. This is by far the most useful of the GPS modes, especially if you're using autopilot. 
Direct to mode allows you to set a direct course to any waypoint in the world. It can be airports, BORs, NDBs, intersections, user waypoints, it doesn't matter. You can also use direct to mode to set a course to any of the waypoints in your flight plan. You must understand though that it will delete your existing flight plan. Because of this I have pretty much relegated direct to mode for emergencies only. OBS mode seems to get handier all the time. It has completely replaced almost everything I used to use direct to mode for. In simple terms, it converts any waypoint in your flight plan to a VOR-like nav aid. Guidance is displayed in the HSI just like a VOR. To use it, you have to have a flight plan and the GPS must currently be in leg mode in order to invoke it. And just like in nav mode, the course knob sets your radial. And as a side benefit, using this mode often will help keep you current navigating with VORs. A bit of a lost art, I think. I hope I haven't overcomplicated these navigation modes in my attempt at thoroughness. It's really not that complicated. Garmin helps you a lot by adhering to their color conventions. Pink needles is GPS, green needles is nav. It's important also to remember that direct to delete your flight plan, and if that's not desired, learn to use OBS mode, which beautifully mimics a VOR and does the equivalent of a direct to for waypoints in your flight plan without destroying it. OBS is great for flying holding patterns too. The VOR is not an obsolete nav aid, nor is its concept. Learning to fly the VOR yields many benefits. Well, I hope this video enhances your understanding of the G1000 and clears up any confusion you may have had about its many modes. The Garmin engineers have invested many hours in making it both logically intuitive as well as powerful. That's a delicate balance, and I think they've done very well. As always, I appreciate your watching, and I value your comments. I look forward to our next session. Thanks for watching.